Hello. Hey there, how are you? Good. I am not getting. Uh... Give me one second, Austin. I'm just starting the practice session. Um, he is, yes. So let's let's finish this discussion after and we'll figure it out. Thanks. All right. Bye. All right, Jeremy, how are you? Pretty good. Okay. Hello, everyone. We'll get this thing going here. Um, thank you very much for attending. Uh, my name is Austin Buckles. I'm the sales manager at DB Sales. And this is another um, weekly uh, webinar that we have on various topics, uh, topics that we present. Uh, this week's topic uh, is semi-instantaneous heat exchangers and condensing uh, water heater slash boilers with our guest speaker, uh, Jeremy Lindstead, VP of Sales from Ace Heaters. Um, during the presentation, um, we'll just be going through um, and not taking uh, questions, but feel free to uh, write any questions or ask any questions in the Q&A box at the bottom of the screen, um, and one of the panelists will be happy to answer for you. Um, we may take some questions towards the end, uh, and we'll be answered in the same format that way, uh, and we'll, but we can answer them uh, live uh, from Jeremy Lindset towards the end. Um, but with that, I will hand uh, this over to Jeremy to get this started. Thank you very much. All right. All right. Uh, thank you all for uh, having me. I appreciate it. I hope you're all doing well. Um, so today we're going to be talking about uh, semi-instantaneous heat exchangers and condensing water heaters and boilers. Uh, like Austin said, that uh, my name is Jeremy Winstead. I'm the uh, VP of Sales at Ace Heaters, and we do manufacture this type of product. So with that, I will continue on here. So there's the semi-instantaneous water heater. Um, you can see there in the, uh, the PowerPoint presentation here. So today we'll be talking how the mini pack or semi-instantaneous water heater works and some of the feature and benefits of this type of product. So what is a semi-instantaneous water heater? What is a semi-instantaneous water heater versus a instantaneous water heater? So the ASHRAE definition is that your heating medium is in the tubes or your Boiler steam, or boiler steam or boiler uh, water is in the tubes and your service water is in the shell. And it's a five to one water to steam 
ratio. So, so basically, I'll read it to you. Using a semi-instantaneous water heater does not require a mixing valve as the imbalance is in favor of domestic water allowing it to be more consistent, efficient, uh, efficient transfer of energy and, low, and lower temperatures. A uh, higher volume of, of water in the shell allows the water to have more time to heat to the exact temperature that you set it for. The, uh, con the control, uh, control system has more time to react to the temperature uh, changes to prevent overheating. And that is the key benefit of a semi-instantaneous. So your domestic water volume is much greater than your heating medium. So that's the way it works. And with an instantaneous, it's opposite. So your domestic water is in the tubes and your, your uh, boiler steam or boiler hot water is in the shell. Um, so the instantaneous, semi-instantaneous type unit is a more efficient design. So how does it work? So this is a semi-instantaneous heat exchanger that we manufacture. We call it the mini pack. So basically your cold water service enters into the domestic inlet and goes through a baffle system. As you can see here in the illustration, it kind of weaves in and out and then up to uh, the top of the unit and out to your domestic open loop type system. Um, at the top of the unit, there is a sensor that senses the temperature, um, which will go back to the control uh, as your set point. So, so basically with that sensor, you're gonna basically have your desired uh, temperature uh, uh, settings. And that will tell the valve exactly how to react. So if, it, if the valve needs to open and let more steam in, I'm just going to use steam as the example. Um, open to allow, it opens to allow more steam in when you need more temperature. And as temperature rises, it, the valve will start modulating close. And with this type of unit, you do have a circulator pump that's built into the unit. This is not a building cert loop. This is a, a, uh, a uh, uh, recircular, recirculating pump for the unit itself. So basically the idea of this is that it takes the hot water from the top of the unit and brings it back down to the cold water inlet. The sole purpose of this is to even out any hot spots inside the unit and that this will allow you to have better temperature control. So one of the unique design aspects of the uh, ACE uh, semi-instantaneous unit is that we have something called subcooling, and I'll go into that a little bit later in the uh, presentation. So basically, as steam goes into the unit on the left-hand side of the illustration through the uh, through the strainer, uh, steam will go through the the control valve, and then it will go up through the coil, and as the coil um, as the steam goes up, it will start to naturally condense. So it's all in the design of the coil. So as the, co as the steam hits the top part of the, uh, the U, uh, YouTube uh, heat exchanger inside there, it will start to condense and start to cool and come out through the other side. So what we do is we supply an orifice trap to push that condensate out. So the idea of subcooling, it's a more of, a, of a, an efficient design. So you're basically, you're not losing that heat um, through the steam trap. You're actually putting it to where you want it, in the water. So that's why you have a subcooling design and you don't require a steam trap. So some of the features and benefits of the semi-instantaneous we're gonna go, we'll go into here is the quality of construction, uh, factory packaging options, valve options, the subcooling design, temperature control, uh, over temp control, and uh, the two bundle that we do offer. So the idea of construction is that we want to use high quality materials. So the, the unit is by standard designed with 316L stainless steel 
on the shell side. Um, so the shell is 304 or 316 L stainless, which is uh, NSF uh, certified, marked. So the material is uh, designed for potable water use, which is very important in today's, today's age. All other wetted parts are 304 stainless. The units are designed to ASME section eight. Um, and then with the two bundle, um, we actually use a thicker uh, material. So we'll use 304, um, excuse me, uh, copper that's 049 thickness, which is a 36% increased wall thickness over most standards of 035. So the idea of that is that most other competitors out there will use a thinner wall, but ACE will use a 049, which will give a longer life to the heat exchanger itself. So with that, we do offer 10-year warranties, 20-year warranties on this type of product that's non-prorated by the factory. Optional uh, materials that we do for the heat exchanger is uh, Cooper Nickel. And again, this is more based on the design of the application. Uh, Cooper Nickel is available in single wall or double wall. And then we do offer stainless steel for single wall um, applications, but not double wall. Just to be clear on that, there is no real double wall manufacturer out there for stainless steel. So the design of the product, you know, it's, we need to adapt to, to the, to different applications. So there's an offering for the vertical type of orientation or a horizontal. You could see in the illustration on the side there that the semi-instantaneous mini pack can come in a dual rack, sometimes three stacked if, if necessary. And our mini packs for California are, uh, are uh, certified per uh, seismic calculations for the state of California. So I believe we're like a zone four uh, certification, which will have basically a PE review the, the, uh, the bases and sign off on them and provide a calculation for anchoring. So with this design, you do have smaller footprints. So it's ideal to fit into smaller locations. You don't need a big storage tank uh, to, to operate. You could use one of these. Um, the design parameters are from 150 PSI all the way up to 400 PSI, depending on your application. Most standards we see today are 150 PSI, but like, for example, uh, New York or high-rise buildings will require more pressure, and we will design it for that uh, pressure per ASME code. The, um, and the idea is that you need more pressure to push up. So, so in the more high-rise type applications, even military type of specs, you need air pressures. So we're able to accommodate those type of applications as well. On the design side, we also have a variety of sizes to meet those applications. So you have a four inch all the way up to a 16 inch diameter type unit. Diameter is in the, the coil side. Um, and each unit is basically size based off the specification and designed to those specific specific the specifications for the performance that is required. So basically your steam pressures, your delta T, and your flow rates. And as you can see our flow rates, we have designed these units to go from 5 GPM all the way up to 500 GPM on the domestic side. Now you're not going to see a lot of applications with 500 GPM but mostly at most applications we do see are between five to the 50 GPM. That's probably what we see most of. And on the steam side, if it is a steam application, we design it for five PSI steam up to 200 PSI steam uh, for those particular applications as well. Serviceability, the tubes are designed to come out um, of the unit if you do have any type of uh, inspections or maintenance that are required. You'll be able to drop 
the two bundle out through the bottom or the side of the unit. For double wall units, I would always recommend a horizontal uh, to pull that two bundle out because in double wall applications, your unit's uh, coil is a little bit longer because of the heat transfer. Most parts that are provided are locally available, so you could have quick replacements. And as I said earlier, we do not uh, require a steam trap uh, for, for our type of product. So your valve options. So you can see there are three basic valves that we do use, and there's actually four, but uh, in this illustration I showed three. So you have a pilot-operated valve, a pneumatic valve, and an electric valve. In the electric valve, well, let me kind of take a step back. So back in the, I would say, early 2000s when I started with the company, most applications just required a uh, pilot operated type valve, which is basically a mechanical valve that you set with a, a wheel on the pilot there. Um, it's just a cast iron valve with, um, with it's, it's a very mechanical valve, I should say. Pneumatic, uh, was very popular for a while there, but most buildings do not offer air. And most new constructions don't, don't uh, provide air as well. Um, and most, and we're seeing a lot of retrofits as well, they wanna go to the electric valve. And the reason probably 90% of our business plus is electric because it's able to tie into building management systems and that's very important these days, <clears throat> excuse me. So you're able to basically, you have a smarter control with the electric valve and you're able to tie into building management systems um, uh, for those types of applications. As I said, most, most applications require some BMS type of setup. So with that controller, I'm speaking with the electric type valve, we guarantee plus or minus four degrees or better. Um, so with that controller out of the box, you're able to tie into a uh, mod bus. We do have op options for mod bus RTU if required. Um, if you have a different protocol for your building management system, you're able to, uh, able to provide a gateway control to tie into your back nets or, or lawn works if necessary. So on the subcooling side, as I mentioned earlier, and I wish I had more of an illustration of it. So you would have to basically, so basically as the steam enters the coil, it starts moving up through the coil and starts to condense. And as, that, as it starts to condense, it starts to cool. And so we guarantee subcooling, which based on factory testing, our condensate coming out of the unit is below 170 degrees um, and we've seen as high as 180. So with that you don't really need a steam trap and again we do offer as standard a orifice which is basically a two inch orifice plate, a uh, bronze plate with a orifice hole drilled into it which is actually sized based off the app uh, based off the performance to push that condensate out. Now saying that we do not require Require a steam trap, but we can provide one if the application does require it. We'll size it here at the factory and put it on there. Um, so we've done them both ways, but, mo but, but mo most of the time we do use our orifice trap design. It's a proven method. We've uh, been manufacturing these since the mid, mid 80s, and that's kind of our standard. Um, in, the, in the benefit of having a low condensate temperature is that it not only protects the unit and gives you more efficiency, it also protects the things outside of the unit. You don't need the steam trap, you don't have to worry about the maintenance on that. Your, your condensate pump will have longer life because it's not seeing that temperature. So with the orifice trap, we do require that the unit is drained to gravity. So some of the safety features with the semi-instantaneous type heat exchanger um, is obviously you'll have a relief valve, a, a temperature pressure relief valve 
but we go beyond that. So in your, in your controller, for example, you have a, your temperature controller set at 140 degrees, you know, desired temperature, and then you have a high limit built into there, which is 160 degrees. So in a single safety type setup, the unit, say, for example, for some reason, it starts over 10. So what would happen is, is that as the unit hits that 160 degree high limit mark, the, the, uh, the, uh, a signal will be sent from the control down to the valve to tell it to close. Um, so at that point, operations basically stop until the temperatures drop back down and the, the operations were able to start again. So we go one step further with the double safety solenoid. But the double safety solenoid would be basically what will happen in that sequence of operation as the unit hits that high limit of 160 degrees, the uh, signal will be sent down to the valve again, causing the valve to close, and then a signal to the dump safety telling the, the safety to be, uh, telling the uh, safety solenoid, as you see in the illustration, to dump. So open up and drain the unit of its water. Of course, it should be piped down to a drain. So the idea behind that is, is that you don't have scolding water going out to the, your potable system, to your showers, to your sinks. Um, as, and once the uh, unit is drained, the operations will start again. The unit will fill up, the valve will start modulating, and you'll hit your set, your set point temperatures. And you know, saying that, you know, you don't want scalding water going out to your systems. Most systems obviously will have a mixing valve somewhere along the line to prevent that as well. So it's just one more set uh, safety feature that we do put on our, our units. So double wall applications. Um, so California is a double wall state. Uh, all applications required, require double wall for, uh, for uh, domestic uh, use. So here's, a, here's an illustration of double wall. So basically you have a, a basically a tube within a tube and the, you can see there the outer tube has some valleys around it. So this is basically a leak detection. It's a visual leak detection. So if your coil has a rupture in it, a leak will develop obviously and start traveling down uh, through the valleys in that outer tube and then come out through one of the, out through the uh, tube sheet as you see on the illustration um, there. So that is a visual uh, leak detector and also this basically the the reason for this is to basically see that the unit has a leak and you're going to have some cross contaminations between your boiler hot water or your boiler steam inside the unit. So as I said before California requires double walls so that's what we will always provide for California. There's still states uh, out there that uh, only require single wall and some states actually allow, that are considered double wall states, will allow single wall, but they'll have pressure gradient systems. So with those pressure gradient systems, they will um, basically detect the pressure differential in the shell, and at which point will shut off the unit, basically telling the uh, service person that there is a leak in the unit. And at that point, you would have to pull the bundle and do an inspection on that type of uh, unit or failure. So what are, the, what are the applications for the semi-instantaneous type unit? Pretty much any type of commercial application, hotels, universities, hospitals, military, um, uh, any type of commercial applications. As you can see there, there's a quote from a, a hotel a general manager. We have over 7,000 showers, plus thousands of sinks uh, in our guest rooms, plus kitchens, et cetera, and we've never run out of hot water. So again, that's a nice quote for a general manager at a hotel, but again, every application is key, and we size every type of 
and we were able to size the unit that will fit your application. So all we need is the specification as well as the schedule and the performance of the unit and we'll, we'll size it here at the factory and we'll pick the best unit that will fit and work for you. So that's the uh, semi-instantaneous uh, presentation. And I want to kind of go into now the condensing. Hey, hey Jeremy, this yeah. is uh, this is Steve Merz. Hey, How are you? Hey, you before we went into the next thing, we we had a question come in here from Christopher, mm -hmm. uh, just asking if there was uh, other means to mitigate acidic decomposition other than the thicker wall coils. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if it needs more of a dielectric type of uh, decomposition or, or really an acidic, an acidic decomposition. But I, I don't know what your, your thoughts are on that, but it was a question that we had come in over the Q&A here. Well, that's a, that's a good question. I, I don't know exactly the, um, the answer, but usually like with, with maybe the water in the application, um, you might want to look at alternative materials for the coil. Um, uh, maybe like a Cooper nickel type coil. I'm not sure if that answers the question, but I'll definitely look into it. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, thank you, Jeremy. And then, uh, sorry about that. Just wanted to see if we can no, answer no. that question on while we were on this, uh, uh, Steve, this, this phase of the, the presentation and you can go on to the next there. Yeah. If you can, Steve, could you shoot that over to me in an email and I'll be happy to look into it and then answer it properly. Sure, will do. All right. Let me uh, get over to the next presentation. Okay, so oops. So we'll uh, in in this in this phase of the presentation, um, we'll uh, be discussing the Atlas or condensing water heater and, and boilers. Um, so here's kind of the rundown of what we're gonna kind of touch base on. Uh, what is condensing, uh, sizes, models, uh, design, man, no, we're not gonna touch manufacturing, but uh, serviceability applications. So what is condensing? Condensing happens when the moisture is in, uh, in the exhaust is cooled enough to change into a liquid. During this process, heat is given off with, without uh, adding any more energy to the system. If this extra heat can be trapped inside the heat exchanger uh, and used to heat the coils, then you'll have a much higher efficiency that can be achieved. The process happens when the water temperature is below 140 degrees, and that's key. Uh, and this will increase your uh, efficiencies to 90 plus percent, rather than the 86 percent that you'll see in non-condensing type of uh, uh, boilers. So again, that is absolutely key when it comes to condensing. So to achieve those temperature or efficiencies, you need to operate at low uh, temperatures. So anything under 140 degrees, you'll start condensing. And that's exactly what you want to achieve those efficiencies. So the lower the temperature, the higher efficient you'll get. You'll see manufacturers out there, and I'm guilty of it too, that will advertise 99% efficiency, but that's not real world conditions. Um, not everyone's, running at you know 33 degrees uh temperature you know most applications are running around you know 115 degrees or something you know something like that where you're achieving probably realistically around not the mid 90s uh in efficiencies and if you're operating above 140 and you have a condensing boiler you're not getting in the 90s you're getting into the 80s mid 80s uh condensing uh non-condensing mode which that's not what you paid for. You paid for a condensing boiler, so you do need to operate at low temperatures. Oops, sorry about that. I'm getting old, having a little issues. There we go. So there are several different model sizes that ACE provides. 
we do 500,000 BTUs up to 3 million BTUs in the atlas. Now, with that being said, we do, we do have another product line called the Liberty line, which is basically 200,000 BTUs up to 800,000 BTUs. So it's a, for the smaller type applications, we do offer a different product as well. But this is our main condensing line, the Atlas boiler slash water heater. So again, I did say we do advertise at higher efficiencies, but, but uh, you could see in perfect uh, factory testing environments, we'll achieve 98% efficiencies. Real world tested, in the field tested, we're operating about 93, 94% efficient with a turndown of 7.5 to one. Outdoor approved, which is key for California. California, as most of you do know, that the uh, most applications are outdoor. So our units are certified for outdoor uh, use. So we are ETL certified for outdoor. So we went through all the rigors of testing. So we did the rain test, wind test uh, for this product line to be certified for outdoors as we do for all our product lines since we do manufacture in California. We have a fully modulating type product. Uh, you can see there we're uh, nine P, under 9 ppm NOx and we are certified with AQMD for low NOx. Um, as California has the highest standards for uh, NOx requirements, we do meet those and certified to AQMD. Uh, most, you know, as most of you know, most, most other states do follow California's lead. And so most states are going to lower NOx requirements, maybe not as low as 9 ppm. There are some counties in California that re require less than that, but we are certified. Um, the dual fuel options on this type of product, you'll have uh, basically natural gas and propane, um, either or, or both. So you'll be able to, uh, so what we do here is we provide a, a tool, uh, sorry, excuse me, a two gas valve setup. So you'll have two gas valves in the, uh, in the cabinet and the combustion system to switch over easily to propane if required. Uh, there are some hospital applications that require a quick changeover if necessary, rather than breaking it all apart and putting in a, the backup gas valve, you're able to do that with our unit, with basically a, a, a turn of a switch. So you have a small footprint with this type of product. Um, as most products these days, they're very modular, uh, small, compact. Um, so our units are designed to fit through a standard 36 inch door. So even from a, from a 500,000 BTU up to a 3 million, it's no more than 36 inches wide. So rather than making them wider, we make them taller. Uh, and the, you know, 60, 60 dBs for your decibel level, level. So it's a very quiet, smooth operating type product. So here's some of the designs of the unit. So it's, the Atlas unit is a very unique design for a condensing uh, boiler slash water heater. It's a single pass coil. Um, so you just have, you don't have uh, passes. It's just a single pass in and out. Um, it's all bronze and copper construction, which is very unique for this, for this type of uh, product. So some of you are asking, well, it's a copper type heat exchanger in a condensing acidic environment. So, so what we do here at the factory is we ceramic coat it. Um, so we basically take the heat exchanger, coat it with a ceramic type of uh, material, which protects, protects it from the uh, acidic condensate. So with, with that being said, I'll sh and I'll show you some pictures of what the coil would look like uh, during manufacturing. So, so this is, you're able to protect the coil and able to still achieve higher efficiencies, uh, higher efficiencies and higher, better heat transfer. And that was one of the reasons why the unit was designed with copper is because of better heat transfer. Even with the ceramic coating, we've tested that we don't lose much uh, heat transfer. 
So on the combustion side, you can see there, that's the, uh, so you use a, a blower, a pretty standard blower for this type of product, 121 volts. But we do have options for uh, 240 or 460 if necessary. You could see there the, the uh, gas valve. So as I said before, natural gas or propane. So in the propane and natural gas applications, we'll basically put two of those there and then put a control to switch it to, uh, to propane or natural gas. In a low NOx fiber uh, mesh type of burner, this is a vertical design, so everything kind of drops in through the top. Oops. So on the control side of this type of product, um, we do use Honeywell solar controllers, as you can see there from the illustration. It is a full touchscreen type of uh, controller. If you're out of the box, it's Modbus capable. You could lead lag up to uh, eight boilers with the controller. So basically what you do, you set your uh, master boiler and then your, um, your slave boilers, and then they're able to lead lag uh, from one boiler to another boiler. And you're just gonna basically uh, uh, daisy chain the units together uh, with field wiring to, to achieve that. So again, out of the box, you got Modbus capabilities, but understanding that not every application is Modbus, we do offer a gateway type control, uh, which will be able to tie into your BACnet protocols or your lawn work type protocols. And we do do all the setups here at the factory. So Based on your design, what we'll do is that we'll, we'll, we'll pre-program everything uh, to, the, to our abilities based on that particular product. And granted, there's things that do change, so you as the customer will have access, a certain level of access, to change some of those parameters uh, for, your, for your application. Because every application is different, it's always changing, so you do have some ability to change some of the factory settings based on the passcode. Now, I believe in this type of controller, you're able to, I mean, there's like three or four levels of, of passcodes and there's levels that we can't even get into for safety reasons. So you won't have any access to any safeties, um, but you'll have access to change some of the parameters that you need for your application. So here's the, an example of what you'd see with the ceramic coat. You could see that the coil is a, a, a rolled type copper fin coil. Um, and you can see the ceramic coat that it's rated for over 2000, rated for 2000 degrees. And you can see in the note there that based on testing, you're not gonna see temperatures inside the combustion chambers above 1700 degrees. So there's a lot of room to play there. Um, and we've been manufacturing this product since 2002. This is the second generation of this type of product. And we've been man manufacturing this one since 2005, 2006. And I could assure you that I've never had a unit fail due to the acidity or, uh, of, uh, of uh, the condensate. So on the serviceability side of the unit, <clears throat> excuse me, everything is available, everything is accessible through the front of the unit. Your controls, your combustion system, everything's hinged doors, so you're able to open it up, you have access, and you have a lot of space in there to get to everything. The control side is right in front of the unit, so you just open it up and you're able to, to do what you need to do, um, if necessary, on the wiring side. Um, as you can see there, the top plates, top hinges open up, so you have access downwards if you need to get to the burner or remove the, the, uh, the blower for some reason or another. Um, everything, you actually have uh, pallet jack accessibility to move it around, get it to its install place. Um, where a lot of different other manufacturers don't even offer that, you have to put it on rollers to move it around and get it into place. So this is just a little nice, you know, extra little feature. And one of the key parts um, is, are the operation temperatures of the unit from the jacketing to the top plate. You could see there that the 
top plate, and this is real test that we've done here at the factory, on a day that was 91 degrees, the top plate reached 112 degrees. So meaning, if you need to get into the unit for whatever reason, and again, it's a door that just opens, you're not gonna burn yourself. You're not gonna actually accidentally hit that top plate and burn yourself. And you can see the UV scanner on there, um, uh, temperatures, the jacket temperature. So it's really a well insulated type unit. And on a cooler day, obviously, the, the temperatures do go down. So what are the applications for this type of product? I mean, again, any type of commercial application, this unit will fit from pool heating. Um, as you can see, you know, we do, as for the pool heating, some of you will say, well, well, you know, it's not a Cooper nickel type heat exchanger. That is very true. It's a copper heat exchanger. So ideally what you want to do with that type of application, is you have a heat exchanger, um, a secondary heat exchanger installed. Saying that as well, I do have an application that's been installed for 10 years. It was a school district back east where they bought two of these units, one going to one school, one going to another school, and one had a secondary heat exchanger uh, to pr protect it from the, the pool water, and the other one was a direct pool heater. So it was installed and operates directly with the pool, and it's been in operation for 10 years and no issues. I do follow up on that job just for uh, uh, a case study. Um, snow melt, we do have applications where our atlas is is uh, doing all the snow melt for athletic fields. That's a, a very nice application for that. And uh, any type of domestic water heating type of application that you would need this for because of the copper. And it is saying that it is certified by ASME. So it'll be section four ASME code that it is certified for your boiler use and your HLW domestic use as well. Um, so, for in as well as any type of uh, commercial or central heating type of application that you you uh, may use this for as well. Uh, what we do ask for here at the at ACE is that we are aware of what type of application this is going into, and uh, so we're able to market and certify it certify it appropriately. So, if you come to us and the specification says that it is for uh, central heat, we'll build it to the, that requirement of the code and stamp it appropriately uh, with an H stamp. That's how we were able to do that. So just a quick installations on this type of product. Um, we have installations in LA. You could see in the uh, upper corner there, at the Glacell Apartments, uh, those units are designed for outdoor. And that's the reason why I put that there is because this is an application we have for outdoor in LA. Um, we do have actually applications back east as well with harsher wet weather conditions where, where uh, there is heavy snowfall and they're at, installed outside. Why? I don't know, but, but it is working fine. So, and also one of the other benefits of the uh, Atlas is that it is a smaller modular type product where you could see at the Park Lane Homes application, you could see the five vents up there. That job had three, or sorry, five of the three million BTU type products. And they were basically stacked side by side in that little shed, very tight installation. And we're able to, to, to provide that for you because we are certified with ETL. And they, the only thing ETL does require us to do is give it six inches side by side. Uh, front, you'll need access, a little bit more access, obviously, to, to work on it um, if need to, need to. So any type of applications, hospitals, apartments, uh, hotels, this is an ideal type product for you. And there's my contact number um, and my email address and our website. If you guys have any questions um, that I'm not able to answer, please send me a, a, a email and I'll be happy to gather that information and get back to you um, with your uh, answer.
Thank you very much. Hey, Jeremy, this is uh, Steve Mertz. Uh, just one thing, uh, just for some of the people don't know, uh, like some of the Ajax le legacy products, and I don't know if you mm -hmm. really want to address it at all, but maybe just cover like the, the, what parts and things that you can still cover from the old Ajax legacy products. I know you don't make some of those anymore, but uh, you know, I don't know if we uh, maybe mention some of the, pro the the support that you can still provide for them or some of the parts, just so you know, people are aware of, you know, for some of the old Ajax legacy products. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for, thanks for bringing that up, Steve. Um, yeah, so as some of you may know that uh, Ace Heaters um, was formerly Ajax Boiler. I worked for Ajax for almost 20 years, and we manufactured a lot of, uh, lot, of, lot of bigger water boilers and steam boilers. We no longer manufacture that under Ace Heaters, um, but we do still support them uh, to a certain extent. So we're able to supply most of the parts for those, for those type of products. I mean, Ajax was around for, I don't know, 80 years. So, I mean, there's a lot of Ajax boiler installations in the state of California, in Southern California. There's tons of them. So, you know, even though we dropped the boiler line, we're able to still support them to a certain extent. So we still supply all the head plate gaskets. Um, that's one of the nice things. So any type of, even if your boiler was built in 1961, we'll st we're still be able to uh, supply those gaskets. And we do have most of those uh, gaskets in stock here at our factory. Any other type of component as well, like uh, an aqua stat, uh, you know, your operating stat or your high limit stat, we'll be able to supply as well. On the older atmospheric type products, again, Ajax had a ton of atmospheric ap applications here in California, we do still supply all the burners. So the burners changed year from year, but we're able, we have a stock of all the burners. So we're able to supply those type of burners uh, for, for those type of uh, boilers based on whatever size you have. Um, the things that we don't do is we don't manufacture parts for, for that unit. So like, for example, if you need a, a head plate, um, for some reason or another, we, we do not manufacture those anymore. Um, and for the high pressure steam stuff, we don't because we don't carry the uh, S stamp uh, anymore for uh, section one uh, ASME uh, high pressure steam type applications. So those are, you know, gas valves, gas trains, components. We still support all of that stuff. So if you have any questions, you, I mean, the phone number, the old Ajax phone number is actually that we're on all the nameplates are linked to our current phone number. So if you call that phone number, it will, it will, it will be transferred to uh, us at Ace Heaters. Okay. All right, thank you, Jeremy. Uh, again, this is uh, Steve Mertz over at DB Sales and uh, our team with Austin Buckles, our sales manager. Uh, we thank you for coming out today. And if anybody does have any uh, other questions, uh, feel free to, to chime in now. I'm, I'm not seeing any other questions come through on the Q&A or in the chat here. Uh, so with that, I, I guess we can wrap it up. And uh, I really thank you, Jeremy, for coming out and helping support us here today uh, with our, our, our weekly seminars that we've been putting on. And uh, thank you for the support and uh, the education. All right. Thank you very much, guys. I really appreciate it. All right. Have a great day. Thank you.